All right, we might uh, get this show on the road. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, what is going to be the start of a four-part series for Live Tiles here with uh, Microsoft Teams for Government series. Now today we're going to have a look at a few different bits and pieces and I've got a few guests with me to help me uh, go through this session today which is Microsoft Teams 2.0 from video to a thriving hub of collaboration. Now introductions here you can see uh, these uh, three very handsome gentlemen on the screen in black and white. You can also see our faces moving on our videos here today. So you've uh, got me, I'll be emceeing today. My name's Chris Lee Kinenko. I'm the host and creator of the Intelligent Workplace podcast here at Live Tiles and uh, MC of many of these webinars you might have seen me before. We've then got uh, Vlad Radiovich, who's the senior account executive at uh, Live Tiles here, who uh, sort of looks after the, uh, the government sector for us. And then we've got uh, Simon Tyrrell, who's our chief product officer here at Live Tiles. And he's the man that's going to be driving the demo for us today. So if you don't know anything about live tiles, um, I'd be quite surprised because you've uh, signed up for one of our webinars. But uh, this is us. We're a global company specializing in uh, employee collaboration and communication software and services and AI for the workplace. And we're in a whole bunch of different locations, as you can see there. And you can find us at livetilesglobal.com. So if I click my, there we go. So on the agenda for today, so actually, I think I might have slipped, skipped a note. There we go. Um, as I said, we'll be talking about phase two of Microsoft Teams. So it's important to plan for success. Um, corporate comms for cut through is a really key part of this as well. Uh, we're going to take a look at unifying applications and systems in Teams and then uh, managing Teams intelligently. As I said before, we've got Vlad here today who's looking after you. My slides aren't working today. There we go. Vlad. Mate, I might hand it over to you to uh, give everybody a bit of a, a market observation of what you've been seeing lately in, in your local market. So here's Vlad. Thanks, Chris. So hi, everyone. As noted in the intro slide, my name is Vlad and I look after lifestyles in Canberra. Um, a few of you may know me, but I might also be a, a unfamiliar face to a few of you. So over the past six months, we've seen quite the dramatic change to the way we work, uh, not just in federal government, but across Australia and the globe. And one of the key drivers to this change has been the increased need for new ways of working due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I recently read in an article which, was, which suggested that private and public sector organisations have actually adopted five years worth of technology, of technological advancement in the past year. And the key drivers have, have been drought, bushfire and the global COVID-19 pandemic. For government, I think this, uh, this accelerated adoption is even greater. Government offers essential services which can't stop no matter the challenge faced. With the inability of government to stand still, public servants have had to adapt to these challenges. So more of us are, are working from home, something that was pretty much unheard of in many government departments only six months ago. Working hours have shifted with the length of the average day increasing by an average of 48.5 minutes. And for those with children at home, parenting and work have played a balancing act blurring the lines even further between work and life balance. The number of meetings we attend has gone up by 12.9%, while the average time spent in meetings has actually dropped by 20%. Collaborative technologies have underpinned a lot of these shifts with Microsoft Teams leading the way. Many agencies have already started utilizing Microsoft Teams for video conferencing and for collaboration, but the platform can be so much more. Uh, I'll leave it to Simon to show you the true power of the platform. And with that, I'll, I'll pass it on to Simon. Thanks, guys. Yeah, hey, thanks, Vlad, and hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join us. And um, Chris has just got a couple of talking point slides, and then we'll jump into some, some show and tell. And also, if you have any questions, fire them into the, uh, the Q&A part of the webinar, and Chris will call them out as we go along and also at the end. So, so as Vlad alluded to, the, the growth and explosion of teams in every industry is um, being significant, rapid, and in many ways unprecedented. And we're seeing that across our customer base uh, globally and across every industry, every segment, every customer size. And it's been driven by necessity, to be honest. Um, basically, organisations don't really have, uh, haven't had a choice and have had to move to, to many new ways of working, uh, which has both disrupted uh, organisations, but also given uh, really, really interesting new possibilities and opportunities for, for really driving change in, in how people connect and, and work and, and get stuff done. 
And so if we think about Microsoft Teams and, and what it provides, um, in our estimate, well over 90% of users of Teams today do see it as a video meeting uh, and possibly chat platform. And that's sort of their perspective of it. And if you think about your own Teams, your own use, your own organisation, um, be interesting maybe to do a little a little poll to find out what people see see Teams as useful for. And you'll often see it compared to Zoom, for example, for that reason, that it's where we do our meetings. But if any of you have uh, really spent some time in Teams and started to use it to support collaborative processes, um, it's a much richer, richer feature set than that. But it can also be very confusing for users about where they start, what they can use it for. Um, the other interesting thing it's, it's uh, introduced into organisations in a very quick time is it's now where people's attention is. It's where their time is being spent. Potentially less time spent in email, uh, in say Outlook, for example, more time in Teams. We are definitely seeing less time spent on other systems like intranets, for example, because people are in Teams and we're running a number of webinars uh, at the moment talking to that question around, is, your, is our intranets dead? What's it all mean? Um, and so if you sign up to one of those, you'll, you'll hear uh, quite a lot of detail on our perspectives, but also what we're seeing in customers. And um, we've got an interesting one coming up tomorrow evening. That's uh, a European one with Sam Marshall from Clearbox. So sign up for that if you'd like the recording. But we, we see it also as an opportunity to engage your employee base because you do know where they are if they're in Microsoft Teams. But, but how do you do that? Intrinsically by design, Teams is a siloed collaboration tool. Um, it's built around silos of Teams and channels. Um, it's got the obviously one-to-one -one chat and one-to-many chat capabilities, but it's not an all of organization uh, tool. And a lot of the stuff you, you need things like intranets for um, aren't available uh, easily and readily within the Teams um, experience. So what we've been really focused on in recent months is, is how we can help organisations bridge that gap, leverage the fact that that's where users are, um, but also deliver uh, really cohesive, uh, rich experiences that leverages the best of teams, but also provides stuff that, that it's not built to do. And where we start with that is planning for success. And I'm going to uh, run through these uh, areas of, of uh, topics and then I'm going to jump into a demo and show you it all. So this is all about how do you rapidly plan how teams will be done and this of course talks to governance, it talks to provisioning, it talks to all those more I guess um, centralised uh, control type, type uh, systems that you're going to need to think about particularly if you think about uh, scaling teams across a large organisation, how do you know what teams exist, do you have orphan teams etc. But it also talks about how you educate your user base um, on understanding what they can use Teams for. And what I'll be demoing, demoing today are two really simple tools that, that we use. Uh, one is a digital Teams game we also have right here and here. We also have a physical card game, uh, which we actually created pre-COVID. Then we had to digitise it very quickly when, when lockdowns and work from home happened. It's a very simple way of visualising how Teams might apply to a particular group of people, a particular business unit, a department or a process and brings users on the journey of understanding how they might structure and use the various functionality available to them in a much more fun and engaging way than a traditional requirement specification workshop, etc. when they're not necessarily armed with the knowledge to actually deliver um, the answers to questions about how they might use it. We then have another simple tool called the Teams Planner, which allows you to capture the output of uh, those workshops and games and starts to allow you to see the lay of the land on the type of things that, uh, that people want to be using Teams for. And whether any of your administrative settings, things like uh, global external uh, sharing, for example, external guest access, if that turn is turned off and 70% of your, uh, your employee base is expecting to be able to easily collaborate outside the uh, firewall, then you have a problem. Um, so just highlighting those things, there's no right or wrong answer to those sorts of questions, but at least highlights to you. So I'll be showing you that. Next slide, please, Chris. So once we think about how we're gonna roll teams out across an organization and we're getting the business on board um, and they're perhaps even then provisioning their own teams and starting to use it, you start to get this issue of people spending all their time in there because that's where the processes are. Um, how do you start to cut through with organisational wide capabilities and, and the very, very common one we're seeing is corporate communications. 
very traditionally uh, done through platforms like intranets or heaven forbid still done an email. We do still see organisations relying on that. Um, but how do you cut through, get to the, your audience who are in teams, they're in meetings, they're doing all that collaboration um, and get that to them. So we've got our live calls reach platform. I'll be showing you that and one click away from anywhere in teams, you're accessing your corporate news, but you're also being able to create the corporate uh, news from that environment in a very modern and simple way. So a very key part of uh, the overall story and we're seeing a lot of customers who are, who are looking for a solution to this, to this problem. Next, uh, next slide, please, Chris. All right, so we've planned our environment. We've got our corporate communications cutting through, getting to our eyeballs. We've got good engagement with our workforce. How do we start to leverage teams so we can unify things together uh, and give people much easy access to, to data, to information, uh, et cetera? And so I'll be showing you in the demo files everywhere, once again within the native team's experience, providing access to all sorts of stuff. Um, in many ways, this starts to talk to answering that question of um, what happens to your intranet. Lifetiles Everywhere is a really compelling proposition for how you might start to bring what exists in your intranet today into Teams in a unified and centralised manner. Of course, Teams has apps, it has tabs, etc. But we definitely see uh, users getting overwhelmed with how many tabs they might have in a team, which tabs in which channel, where do I go to get that? That's not to underplay the power of having that capability within the context of a channel, within the context, for example, of a, of a collaboration process, but being able to have a higher level uh, within teams of unifying things together is a very, very powerful proposition. And we believe a way that you can start to, once again, give users a reason to, to be in your environment, uh, but accessing a lot more than what they're just accessing through, through Teams native applications. And finally, I'll show you something that's, uh, that's oh, no, we're missing a slide. Um, I'm gonna to touch on uh, something that's very new, hot off the press, that may, may be of interest to you around, with all the meetings going on in Teams, how do you unlock the knowledge, the IP? Um, how do you recap on what's been talked about in meetings that you may have missed, for example, uh, when there's so much recording uh, going on? To give you an idea of the numbers on that, um, last number I saw was something like 2.6 billion minutes of meetings a month happening in Teams. That was a number of months ago, that number, so it could be greater uh, now. Um, and the growth of recorded meetings grew over 500% in, in a couple of months. So there is a lot of content out there, a lot of important information being captured, recorded. The question is, is anyone going back and watching them? And if not, how can we unlock, unlock that? So without further ado, I'm going to jump into showing you some of this stuff uh, in action. And as I mentioned, if you have uh, have questions, please um, please let Chris know, and we'll answer them as we go. So let's just uh, Chris, let me know when we can see this, mate. Hopefully, all good. Yep, looks good. Mate, I'll put you okay. Out. Awesome. Hopefully, coming through okay. So. Where I am right now is I am in, uh, in Teams, as you can, you can see, and I'm actually in a, a team here called Teams Planning Group Demo. And what we've got here is the concept of, okay, we're at the early stage, or maybe we've already let Teams go out, it's gone a bit wild, but we're trying to work out how we get some, uh, some sense around it, how we get a bit, plan, bit of a plan together. So just using uh, a tab app here, um, I've got our Teams game. And as I mentioned before, this is a digital version of a physical card game we created. We've been doing a lot of sessions pre-COVID with Microsoft's customer success team in various states, uh, working with all sorts of organisations on helping them understand Teams. And we've digitised that um, so you can now easily access uh, this from uh, a digital environment and embed it into Teams, for example. So we could combine this with a planner, we could combine this with uh, chat and, and document sharing as well. In the interest of time, I'm going to actually just load in an existing example of a Teams game here so you can see it. So basically the principle here is you set up a game. Um, you have a facilitator, you invite people to join it. It's a synchronous tool so people can be uh, seeing things added, adding things themselves. And just like a physical car game, it's about visualising how things might start to be laid out in your environment. You start by profiling your team and we've identified four areas that really do go to the heart of how teams might be used, that need to collaborate externally, the need for social connection, the need to manage sensitive information. Obviously, if you're collaborating externally, but you're highly sensitive information, you might have a contention there. 
Um, and finally, discoverability. You know, do you, how much serendipitous uh, discovery do you want around teams where people can join them? So, for example, community of practice, community of interest type use case, likely to be highly discoverable. Um, a senior executive um, management team, very low discoverability, high sensitive information, probably low social connection, and probably not collaborating externally. So it allows you to say, okay, for the teams we're looking at, what is their need? And everyone can vote on which way they do and basically gives you a profile of your team. Provides a sanity check at any point when you're having debate around whether you should do, do things or not. Then you lay out purple cards, which are your teams, green cards, which are the channels you might want on the team, and gray cards, which you might want uh, around apps, etc. And it's literally a case of just quickly placing these on a board, and for example, we could come in here and go, well, actually, we also better look at a marketing team and maybe that's private. So the little padlock tells you it's private and let's put in a general channel under that. And it's as simple as being able to just add cards and you can have all of these set up pre-game. Pre and the important thing about this is that you don't have to get this right. The whole idea is to, to challenge it, to, to think about it. You can start a timer here. Um, so you can put time pressure on people to have to sort of ideate and, and brainstorm and, and debate each other. Um, and we find that, you know, a 30 minute session of doing this, you can really get to some detail around teams. And we see things like um, assumptions of we'll have one team for HR might become, you know what, we actually need three teams because we've got too many channels coming on. It's going to be too confusing. Or a classic one is with private channels. People just go, oh, let's start doing private channels. Of course, there's limitations in some functionality in private channels that might be better saying, you know what, policy development should actually be over here and it should be a separate team because it's going to be easier to manage membership at that level. And now let's move our apps under that channel and we'll get rid of policy development and we need our general channel because that's always there. And hopefully you start to see very quickly as you're laying out a plan for how things might start to look and we find it very, very engaging and very quickly you can get people's head around what they might use Teams for. Then you can take all of that and you can plug it into our planning tool. It's just an Excel spreadsheet, very, very simple. And you'll start to see things like here, for example, controlling global access, being able to go in and capture all of those things, a team name, should this be templated or not, that can help you understand what you should do down the track for provisioning, what's its purpose, all those sorts of things. You'll see here, Friday drinks, it's a community, um, guest access is highlighted in red. Why? Because the Friday drinks uh, group has said, hey, this team really should have guest access so we can invite you know, guest speakers, etc." Problem with that is the global setting I showed before is switched off to no. So we're not gonna be able to do that. Is that a problem or not? Uh, and finally, as you start to capture all of this, you start to get a really simple visualisation. One of the benefits of just using Excel for this is you can make whatever visualisations you want off the data. And you can start to see, for example, you know, 62% of our teams don't have sensitive information. 77% uh, don't require guests, but almost a four to do. You can start to see what sort of membership types, what security models are being used. So a really simple way to get the lay of the land for what your team's environment might start to look like. And we think that's key uh, to really getting good sustained adoption of teams. So that's that's the team's planning tool. I'm just gonna jump into um, another environment and show you Lifetiles Reef. So as I mentioned before, this is all about um, you know, how do we engage people? How do we get that corporate top-down uh, information to them when they're in teams? And what you'll see here, backwards, let me jump to this one, it's a better environment to show you this. So I'm in Teams, um, in this case I'm in the web app, but this is exactly the same in the rich client that I was just in. And I've got a SAP over here called Lifetiles Reach. It's one click away, it's pinned to the global app bar, that is now a centralised thing you can control and, and put there, or, or users can choose to do it, they can choose to reorder it, etc. And what I'm able to do here is access a centralised corporate communications platform, um, that is a very modern, it's mobile first, so there's a native mobile experience, of course, because we're in Teams, we, we're in the Teams mobile experience as well, so it provides that ability to us without having to roll out and try and get people to adopt another application. It bakes into the Teams notifications and activity streams, so if a new article's published, if an alert's published, people will be notified in the Teams app, one click away, they're in Teams reading the article. 
what you're looking at here is I've got a bunch of articles here. I've got all the classic stuff you would expect in a corporate communications tool. I've got channels, I've got filtering, I've got search, read, unread, etc. So if I open up one of these articles, this is actually uh, an article about what, what Chris has been up to. So you see I've got that ability to go in here and read it, like it, bookmark it, comment on it if you want to. You can turn all of that off. And it's just basically a, a very powerful enterprise corporate communications tool but delivered one click away within Teams. And then where it gets really interesting is it's not just about consumption of news. So one of the issues is there are corporate communications tools or you could you know, potentially very quickly build something where your existing tool just posts notifications into, into Teams, for example. The issue there is you've got to switch the person's context away from Teams because it's going to be a link back to something else. And we believe that the future of technology is about minimising context, context switching as much as possible. Uh, secondly, what about the creation process? So let's think about uh, if you're a corporate communicator or someone responsible for communicating these messages out a day in the life. Uh, you're in Teams, you're in a video meeting um, and the senior uh, se uh, departmental secretary, for example, has just said, look, we need to urgently get an alert out about uh, our response to the extension of stage four lockdowns. For example, if you have an office in Melbourne, uh, could be a very relevant topic. Okay, we need to get that message out. With the new pop-out capabilities of Teams meetings, you can start to do it all within Teams. One click in the reach, click this little pencil icon, and now because I've got the ability to do this, I'm within the back end and managing the content process and the authoring. And you'll see here, anything below the red line is already published out to my organisation. Anything above the red line is either in draft or is waiting to be approved or it's been scheduled to be published at a different time. I'm not going to go through creating a news article, but bang, I'm in here. I can do multilingual pages if that's of interest. All your, everything you see here is, is standard across the platform. So I enter all my, info, all my content, I can do keywords, I can ask for poll, I can have, embed a poll. Read, read a confirmation, for example, which means it'll track the data on who's confirmed they've read lists. I can make an alert up the top here, which means it'll prioritise it and it will visually change it with a red, red uh, alert option. So all very important stuff. And then other simple things, for example, creating compelling modern content is a really important thing. So we've got Canva integrated here. So I can quickly come into Canva and basically I can start creating a banner image. So let's create a nice, oh, that's a nice banner image. Let's add some text here. Uh, yes, please. Coffee would be great. And let's add that in. And we'll put that on the graphic designer. Let's put that there. And let's use that. That's great. And bang, I've now created a custom, very nice, um, banner graphic without being a graphic designer. Um, straight back into my article, I can do that for also imagery within the content. Uh, content. So the key thing here is Canva is a very, very popular tool for people who don't have access to graphic designers, um, allows you to create really rich, engaging content uh, one click away. And I haven't left Teams at any point. I can do the approvals here, I can do version control here, I can do all the stuff, and I'm, I'm still in Teams. So we think that's a very, very powerful capability. It really does bridge that gap to the corporate perspective of information sharing with the team perspective of, of information collaboration, which is happening in Teams. And then to now jump into live polls everywhere. So once again, it's an app pinned to the bar, in this case at the top, it's one click away. And you'll see here what it's loading up is I've got a dashboard here. I've got my emails, something Teams doesn't yet have in it. I've got a, my tasks coming from Office 365. If I had any recent documents I've been working with in Office 365, I've been seeing them here. And I've also happened to have my calendar. Uh, when we show this to users, their mind blows that all of a sudden they can see all of their productivity stuff all in one place, one click away from Teams, okay? But it's not just that. We can start to think about, well, what about a service menu? This is classically what would be in a quick links area on an intranet. So being able to provide that access and just say to users, hey, if you need to get access to, to the support desk system or a leave request form, it's all available for you. Behind the scenes, this is all driven centrally. Sorry, Chris. No, sorry, mate. We're just got a question sort of probably backtracking yep. slightly. Uh, Chris Leeming's asking, can you publish reach to a set group within an organisation and then pin it automatically on the left bar for all of them? 
uh, can it notify, I think, is that what it means, I, I suspect? Yes, you can. So you've got uh, groups and you've got channels. Uh, you can force following of certain channels. You can also allow users to opt into channels, but absolutely targeting um, targeting content to specific, uh, specific groups is absolutely part of the platform. And then if you're part of that group, for example, uh, yes, you would be notified uh, within the Teams activity stream, as, as well as however Teams is notifying you on the mobile experience, email notifications, the point being any of those notifications when you click, you're deep linked back into the app in Teams. Okay, you're not being taken away to something else, uh, such as a web-based corporate comms platform. Um, yeah, it's all within that Teams native experience. Hopefully that answers that question. Let, well, let us know, Chris, if that doesn't answer it. Um, and so just in the interest of time, we'll go through a few other things here. So um, you can start to think about putting alerts out uh, through this platform. You see here I've got some systems alerts. That's been driven by an intranet, for example, here, but that could be another system driving that. Um, this is a really powerful capability. You know, Teams has the concept of searching for people. It has some profile cards, but it's pretty limited and definitely doesn't go to, you know, start to do the soft types of things that are a staff phone book or staff directory on a, on a intranet might start to do. So what you're seeing here is a rich employee directory search capability. This is driven by uh, one of our quantum AI products called the Intelligent Directory. What's happened here is that service just sits there, reaches out to users based on um, the configuration you've done centrally and says, hey, hey Simon, I'm missing this information about you, can you provide it? As a user, I can just click, type, and it goes away. I don't have to care whether that's in on-premise Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, both, Workday, another HR system. Um, I'm just giving my profile information, which means it's gonna be more up-to-date, more accurate, and that means things like searching can start to be a lot more powerful. Now, of course, being able to provide that one click away within everywhere becomes very, very powerful. Now, I'll just come through here. Here's our policies and procedures. This is our in um, enterprise intranet product driving this behind the scenes, but this could be native SharePoint and could be other systems that you integrate with. And you see here, I've got four policies I must read. Here are contacts around policies, and here's all the policies in the organization that I can just scroll through and click and open those. Once again, just being able to provide that is that corporate top-down information that is still very, very important in distributed working, but allowing users to access that as they need it, and then uh, we can go into providing things like landing pages. So for example, a global marketing page. This is a SharePoint page behind the scenes, but being able to provide that one click away all in the experience. I'm not sure if the Power BI here is gonna work for this user. I think it might. Yep, so being able to think about uh, reporting, obviously marketing and sales data may not be important to this audience, but being able to think about, you know, whether this is Power BI, whether this is Tableau, it doesn't really matter. Being able to provide dashboards, uh, if you're using Yammer, which we do within Lifehiles, we use it for community and all the company chat, um, being able to see that as well, one click away. So if you just think about all of the things I've accessed, I've accessed them from one application in Teams across many, many different integrated systems. And the key thing about this to understand is this is but one type of uh, configuration you can do um, because the way you build this experience out is centralised. So you can start with a templated uh, default, but everything here can be custom configured to what your organization wants to promote as being available through this experience. Once again, we're in Teams, we're in an app in Teams, we flow through to the mobile experience in Teams. So this is all available through the, through the Teams mobile app. Um, you can start to think about baking things into the activity stream, the notification channels of Teams. But the key thing here to appreciate is um, you decide what this, how would this would apply to your organisation. And another really cool feature is all of these panels can be targeted. So you mentioned before, uh, Chris asked the question about targeting corporate comms. You can now target entire experiences. So somebody, for example, in a marketing type role might see a dashboard that's relevant to their information. Someone in an IT service desk role might see uh, access to the latest high priority service now tickets for example. So being able to really focus, uh, contextualise and target uh, what's available to users is a very, very powerful capability. And of course, that can evolve uh, with your use of this. You might start off with one panel, you might start off with three, and then you start to build out experiences over time centrally, and they just get pushed out and made available uh, to the users. And finally, um, let's jump into 
uh, smart meetings. So basically what this is all about is I've got a lot of recorded meetings. I don't know about your, a day in your life, but I know I'm spending so much time in meetings, it's ridiculous. I've got back-to-back -back meetings. A lot of those meetings are recorded. I get told when the recording's ready. I never go back and watch them, right? I don't know why, perhaps because I'm on so many meetings, perhaps because I don't really want to sit down for an hour watching a, a recorded meeting. So what Smart Meetings does, is it takes all of that recorded content, it doesn't move the content anywhere, right? But it runs a indexing and, and discovery process. It uses the transcripts. Now, transcripts have already been captured uh, in Microsoft's back end for this stuff. But once again, a transcript is just a big lot of text, it's for one meeting. This takes all of that information, it can augment it with other data it gets around, like who participated, uh, all that sort of stuff. You can apply advanced AI capabilities if you want. But the point about this is not to be big brother watching. The point of this is for a user to say, look, I know we've had a lot of discussion recently on, let's, let's say, Hyperfish, for example, which is an old product name of our directory capability. Um, and I'm interested in the ones where uh, Carl, our CEO, was participating, right? So I can do that search. And what's happening here, hey, I've got 49 different clips of meetings that have been recorded in Microsoft Teams. Um, and this can also include meetings recorded in other platforms such as Zoom. Um, and over on the right hand side, I have a one minute personal highlights reel. And every little red bar you see here is a new clip. So you can see Carl's holding up some fingers. It's just now gonna to switch to another meeting where Carl is in a completely different thing. There's Jason talking, Carl's on that meeting. And so basically I've got a personal little highlights reel of every meeting that's been indexed into the system. It doesn't have to be every single meeting. You can, you can specify which ones uh, should or shouldn't be included. Um, and allows me as a user to very quickly get up to speed. Now let's think about some logical applications of this. Uh, I've been away on leave for two weeks. I've got a daily stand up in my project team. Uh, that's a lot of meetings to catch up on. So perhaps I want to say, hey, search for where somebody raised issue or talked about blocker um, and for this meeting and bang, I might get 20 seconds of, of where people were talking and if something catches my ear, I can jump out into that meeting. But it could also be used more specifically, for example, learning and development, training type stuff, recruitment processes are an interesting one about being able to record those interviews and then being able to go back and get clips of every candidate and when they talked about their experience with XYZ, right? So being able to very quickly get everybody's talking about that, at any point jump out to the full interview and catch up on all of it. But where's this different to getting notes? Where's this different to getting a transcript? I get to see the person, I see their body language, I can see the context, I can see the question that led to their answer, et cetera. So I get a much richer, more meaningful piece of information than what might be captured traditionally in written notes or even written by AI uh, with a transcript file, for example. So we call that smart meetings, but you can use it for basically any recorded video source and apply it to where you want to provide your users with a much more richer, um, intelligent way to access the information, just like they could search across documents, search a database, search their email, uh, we're now doing that for, for recorded video content. And as you'll see, I've made that available uh, in Lifetiles Everywhere, one click away in Lifetiles Teams. So once again, talking to that point of having these uh, very smart, intelligent experiences, but delivering it to your users where they're doing their work, as opposed to trying to get them to adopt something new, something extra, and then asking them to switch context and go to that thing whenever they want to do it. So just to, uh, just to re recap, um, I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, what we're talking about here is plan for how you think about Microsoft Teams, use tools like we make available with our Teams game and with our planning tool, Use that to engage your user base, get them to understand what teams can be used for, what it shouldn't be used for. That's another important uh, part of that story. Think about the corporate communication side of your organisation. If people are going to be in this tool, how do you get to, get to them, et cetera? Another point I should make on that is that 
you can implement our Lifetime's reach application, but still retain your existing corporate communications platform. It can be integrated very, very easily. So being able to leverage that capability, um, but not have to change your, your backend content processes if you, if you didn't want to, is absolutely possible. Think about how you can start to unify experiences across systems, data and applications. And if you start to really sit down and think about all the things you can make available, that, that becomes incredibly exciting and powerful. And finally, if, if you are seeing a, a huge amount of recorded meetings, if users are, kind of, are starting to see that as a problem, or it's simply just knowledge in your organisation that's locked away in recorded videos that nobody ever gets value out of, um, you can think about that capability I've just shown you, introduced to you, uh, might be an interesting thing to explore or maybe applying it to a more specific use case, particularly if you think training, learning and development um, in this more distributed learning world could be a, a very, very interesting application of it. Uh, so with that, I'll hand back to the guys. Simon, thank you very much for that. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh, there was a lot of ground covered in that uh, presentation there. And uh, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, the great news is that we've got three more of these uh, coming up, same place, same time for the next three weeks. So we'll uh, be looking at uh, if Microsoft Teams can be your departmental intranet, um, we're talking about reaching frontline workers um, and cross departmental groups, and then uh, how to ensure that we have employees engaged uh, during these challenging times and beyond. So there's plenty of content to come. Um, if you aren't able to uh, see the, uh, the sessions live, we are recording these, letting you know where they're kept. They'll be going up onto YouTube and all that sort of thing. So there's, there's plenty going on in this space. So hopefully you enjoyed that. As I said, Simon covered a lot of ground and for the next uh, three sessions, we'll be doing exactly the same. So I might just quickly throw it over to Vlad to uh, wrap things up. Well, firstly, I'll say thank you very much for the questions though. There were a lot of questions um, that were going on there. So that's great. And we've got some stuff to follow up with for those people that I've, I've said we will. I'll hand it over to Vlad, but uh, for now, here we go, Simon. Uh, here we go, Vlad, sorry. So, Chris, any questions I can answer while we've got, I think we've got five minutes or so, I think. Any questions yeah, you want well, to answer? Nothing, nothing in the queue right now. If anything pops up, I'll throw it over to you. Uh, but right, nothing cool. right now. Awesome. So, Vlad. All right, well, thanks guys. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, well, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can also connect with us via the website. Um, I'll be sending out uh, a personalized email to you to um, see if we're offering a team support services as well as part of this and, and the Teams game as well that uh, Simon showed you earlier today. So I uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thanks, Vlad. And thank you everybody for joining us today. This, is, uh, this has been fantastic. It's been really well supported by everybody. So uh, please share the, uh, the news with, with your colleagues and people in other departments, that sort of thing that uh, this is going on. As I said, we've got three more weeks to come. And if anybody thinks that they've missed out on this one, they'll be able to catch up on the recording, which is the way we do things here at Live Tiles uh, with our webinars. So uh, with that, unless there's any final questions, I'm not seeing any coming through. Uh, I'd like to thank Simon for his time this morning to do that presentation. That was brilliant. And thanks to Vlad for being here to support me. So uh, until we talk again next week, I'll end the webinar. Thanks for your time. Thanks, thanks everyone.